Today's episode is sponsored by Regular Words That Sound Dirty. And the other sponsor is Dirty Words That... At some point, every budget filmmaker will have to make a decision to invest in a specialized high-end lens. Now some of you might say, why don't you rent your lenses like most professional filmmakers? Buying your own lenses is what amateurs do and clients won't respect you, you pathetic hobbyist. First of all, that attitude is pretentious propaganda from an elitist industry discouraging working class artists from exploring different options. Second of all, I don't have to rent anything since I pulled all my lenses out of your girlfriend's muff. Yes, all my gear is from your girlfriend's muff, including a note saying, my man is a spineless brown noser. The Olympus Pro 40 to 150mm comes with a plastic hood that attaches and clicks as smoothly as Megatron's colostomy bag. This is a 16-inch element lens with 9 rounded aperture blades. It has autofocus and is weather and dust sealed. The zoom rotation is fairly smooth with enough resistance. Being metal, with its dimensions, it's simply not practical for a Ronin S sized gimbal. It's too heavy and wieldy. The same words a mall security guard yelled when my ex wife raided a muffin shop. It costs 2,000 Canadian, including tax, if bought at supervillain's Jeff Bezos Amazon. You hear that, Augie? Don't drop it, you gargoyle looking oaf of a man. Don't worry, I will take care of it as well as my most prized possession which is my trouser turnip. That means nothing. It's easy to protect a limb that's technically an innie. Wait a minute. What's that stuff on your face? It's my beard. The ladies will like it, since now I have a chin. Come closer. Well, the camera has a hard time focusing on it. Interesting. It looks like the fuzz that goes out of a milk carton after you leave it out for too long. Augie, you found a way to look even more repulsive. Don't go out in public, or we will never get rid of those mask policies. I completely disagree. I think I look ragged, like a famous film star. Yes, you remind me of the German porn actor named Dieter Mietbieter, and that hair was not even on his face. That's what he looked like below the belt when the first lockdown happened and we ran out of razor blades. <laughs> you won't laugh when I'm in the arms of a beautiful lady. That is very unlikely, since she first has to get her arms out of her street jacket. But what will you see when I'm actually am getting married? For real? If that ever happens, I think villagers should whip you in a town square for taking advantage of the alcoholic blind. Everything is now filmed with the Olympus Pro 40 to 150mm f2.8 at ISO 400 using color graded V-Log on the GH5S. In episode 1, I reviewed the 12 to 40mm Olympus Pro. Basically, the 40 to 150mm is the 12 to 40, but on severe steroids. The kind of roids that make you all veiny and turn your Johnson into a belly button. Although Augie would be jealous. Anyways, the 40 to 150 has an even cleaner image, resulting into an even clearer rendering. Color and texture is still phenomenal Olympus quality, that is second to none. Don't assume you will be getting a better image out of a full frame zoom in the same price range. You won't. It's a modern lens, but it doesn't suffer from the sterile, artificial look that most modern zooms and even many primes are inflicted with. With the Olympus, you frame something, you record it, and it looks interesting. And right now, I'm just shooting leaves and twigs, and it's still interesting. It's not just a rendering that only a botanist would love. However, here's a face that only a proctologist would love. It's Augie testing the autofocus. Setting is on face tracking at 45mm. 
If you look in the background, you notice there's very little pulsing going on, which is something you find often on Panasonic lenses. It holds the focus very well, however, once he gets very close, there are issues. One can make the argument that very close up, Oggy doesn't resemble a human face. But I would argue, that's the case in any distance. Yeesh. Look at this runway walk. He looks like a mangled marionette. He did request on some acupuncture treatment for his posture. I did tell him I only would pay for it if it involves an ice pick. Close up at 75mm and the autofocus becomes less consistent. We can see the closer you zoom in, the focus needs more time. And once we are at 150mm, everything is still fine until Augie comes close. A phrase commonly uttered by renter girlfriends. You also don't want to autofocus on someone moving fast, regardless of millimeter. The autofocus motor sounds as smooth as Robocop jerking off to a picture of old Sarah Connor. In other words, not very smooth at all. It should also be mentioned that the filter size is 72mm, which is common enough for ND filters. So how is the autofocus when you're panning forward? At 40mm, very smooth. Similar to the 12 to 40 mm lens that is a dream to use on a gimbal because of that. The 40 to 150 would be great for a dolly shot. At 75 mm, it's still steady and gradual, only falling apart once you get way too close. Even at 150 mm, things remain accurate. As long as you go slow, things will be fine. Now we have the vertical test, where you zoom and pan at the same time, a camera technique used with zooms. It creates a deer in the headlights moment, like when you walk in on your massive ex-wife cheating on you, and the guy is shocked that you came home early. Then he quickly rolls over five times to get off her. In all fairness, he didn't hear me coming since his ear popped when he climbed up. In any case, this telezoom isn't doing very well with the vertigo effect. If you are looking for that effect, a medium or wide zoom is much better equipped. However, one thing the zoom excels in is the zoom. Its constant f2.8 aperture makes it very consistent zooming out and in, a reliable and repeatable feature, until the cops turn up and hand you the restraining order. Shame on you. As for compression, the longer the millimeter, the more compression. Here's Augie at 40 millimeter, a 72 millimeter full frame equivalent. And here's Augie at 150mm, a 270mm full frame equivalent. It's a 1.8x crop with the GH5S. Surprisingly, his lopsided head doesn't change much. Here's a flare test. Fairly well controlled with its Sunstar style lens flare. Olympus has very good coatings. I should also mention that these images have not been denoised. Most night images are shot on natural mode, since V-Log creates more noise. At f2.8, which on the GH5S is an f5 equivalent, you won't get a lot of light. And forget a functioning autofocus at that lighting. However, the manual clutch focus is quite good with its hard stop. When moving the aperture down and up, you notice that the bulky balls still remain a relatively round shape. So severe octagonal balls is something you don't have to worry about. And furthermore, a very little amount of onion ringing. Now we have the party piece of the zoom lens, the pied de resistance. <laughs> Fancy Frenchy word for things are awesome even without soap. You can record the moon. Sure, at 4x digital zoom, things have that 1080p look if you want a short environment. At 2x zoom, things become better. But regular zoom, it's very clean. And if you ever buy the 2x Olympus teleconverter, you will have a very crisp image. However, if you focus on the exposure on the moon, then things look even clean at 4x digital zoom. Very cool. As for the few photographers who are still watching this, here are some 10 megapixel photos shot with the GH5S. Photography wise, which I guess is what this lens originally was made for, it takes all the boxes. It's sharp, renders calls and 3D space well, and autofocus is very quick. Would I recommend it? Well, do you need the best zoom lens for micro four thirds? And stop spending your money on your dates, since women don't respect sims. And start saving up for a lens that actually cares about you. Save up for the Olympus Pro 40-150mm f2.8.
Now you might ask, how would it look if an entire short film is shot on this lens? Well, wonder no more. You shall be treated with this cinematic masterpiece. came from humble beginnings, growing up in a red light district, selling his red light bulbs. A hideous man, who every time he entered a bank, they had to switch off the cameras. And there was nothing society could do for him. When he seeked help from a plastic surgeon, all she wanted to do was add a tail. A man of no value. However, now, things will be different. Trained and conditioned himself to show that even he can turn things around, that even he can achieve self respect. Yes, I can move towards my full potential. Yeah, I come from humble beginnings. What the fuck is that noise? Can people masturbate in peace around here? Fuck! Oh man, now it's all soft again. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! Hey, I mean I do understand that life has no point and that dreams are for ass wipes. You taught us that in German kindergarten. But quoting yourself in a movie is a uh, self indulgent Augie has a point. Granted, prostitutes still tell him not on the first date, but he does have a point. Quoting yourself is very pretentious. It's not pretentious because I'm doing a humanitarian service to promote artistic genius. Once again, you're fired. I have no regrets. <laughs>